Here to talk with us now is the author of BLM, The Making of a New Marxist Revolution and senior fellow with the Heritage Foundation, Mike Gonzalez. Thanks for being here tonight, Mike. Hi, Kara. So good to see you again. Great. So for about a week there, we saw Amazon was blocking ads to promote your new book. And before we get into it ultimately getting reversed, talk to us about the Orwellian nature of that original d denial that you got from Amazon. Yeah, Amazon said that because this is, I wrote about an issue that is, that is uh, debated in society. They had uh, refused to run my ads. You know, I don't really understand how you can sell books, a, uh, books on policy or nonfiction that are not on issues that are debated by society. We sell books and we write books to debate issues, to make a case. So somebody else will come in and make the opposite case and we can have a, a debate and you say, Here are my, here's my data, here's the evidence I show, here's my argument. Um, uh, so, so, and I can't imagine a democracy without debate. I mean, this is, it's definitely a Socratic dialogue is at the basis of our democracy. And, and I'm very happy that Amazon actually reversed itself. So the silliness of its argument and told us it was human error. I guess by human error, it must mean that it was not a, 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 a computer algorithm. It was a, a, a person who did not like my arguments and decided to, to ban the sale of ads. The book itself was never banned. The book itself is, is selling very well on Amazon. Uh, uh, it's actually in the top 500, uh, 400 uh, just now, and is number one in African-American uh, and black and Af African-American history. So I'm very happy with the results. And I am happy as well that you, you get such great results, especially when you're saying that uh, last week you were saying your book was even beating in that category, Ibram X. Kendi. That's even with some of the, the uh, bannings that we're seeing from Amazon with those ads. And thankfully they did reverse. But it seems like that's the trend that we always see the pattern with these big tech companies is that they, they censor as many Republicans and conservative voices as they can. And when someone, you know, is able to raise enough of a stink, they go, oh, whoops, it was just it was just a mistake. It was just human error. And of course, it never seems to go the other way. But we're well aware of this by now. So looking at your new book for for viewers out there who want to become readers, perhaps, of your new book, what do, they, what do you want them to take away from your new book? That the, the concept of Black Lives Matter is unimpeachable. I embrace it. I say Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter to me. But the book is about the organizations and the founders, the creators of these organizations. Uh, they are simply Marxists. That is, they were, they were uh, recruited and trained by communists. They, their, their goal is to dismantle the organizing principle of society. I quote them as saying that. I quote them as saying that they were trained Marxists. I quote their trainers as saying that they recruited them at a very young age. Uh, this is something the media never put out. The media never reported on this. Uh, I saw this very clearly from the beginning as, as the cities were burning uh, and the demonstrations and the riots were happening in 2020. And when I saw that the media were not, was not reporting on this, I decided to write a, my, my book about it, BLM, The Making of a New Marxist Revolution, to explain what was going on. And just quickly before I let you go tonight, before we go into the break here, I know one of your colleagues actually at the Heritage Foundation, Ryan Anderson, I believe his name is, wrote a book about the transgender issue. And I believe that Amazon, I think, completely pulled the plug on that one. Uh, don't even, not just ads, but they weren't even letting him sell the book on their, their massive platform. I believe they're one of the biggest, you know, booksellers in this nation. That So that's quite a hit. And of course, we see what they try to do to your book, trying to take away ads and, you know, getting people to have eyes on your book and wanting to check it out. So do you fear we're going down this totalitarian slippery slope, perhaps, that, you know, the, that the Marxist ideologies the, uh, that underpin the Black Lives Matter movement, it's not just BLM, that we're starting to see it trickle out elsewhere? Well, obviously, uh, once the high tech companies get monopoly or near monopoly status, what they do to censor a debate is, is has a crushing effect on, on the freedom of speech of individuals. This is something that, uh, you know, our political leaders need to take a look at very closely because uh, they, there is the, 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 the right of private property, the freedom of private property, which which I embrace completely. But it's also freedom of speech. And, and um, uh, when Google, when Twitter, when Facebook, when Amazon do, do this type of stuff and, and suppress and censor, it is crushing to the individual. So that is something that I, I think a society has begun to take notice of, especially because it happens only to conservatives. This is not happening to Kendi or Nicole Hannah-Jones, whom I am outselling at this point. I'm happy to report. <laughs> well, congrats once again on the new book and congrats for fighting back against Amazon. Thanks for joining us tonight, Mike. Buy more books. Buy my book.
Help defeat Nicole Hannah-Jones and Ibram X. Kennedy. I love it. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. And after